question came in today, Mikey, I want to do what you're doing. What are my steps in order to do what you're doing? Well, it's kind of a loaded question, but I'll try to answer it as clearly as I can. But I'm not really sure I have an answer. That's next. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. So as I talk about in my book uh, about the starting of the crochet crowd, it is literally a fluke. Honestly, I just hit that rough patch in my life and I felt like I was wasting oxygen. I had no life goals. I was just a disaster. And so literally I put one foot in front of the other and I saw somebody on YouTube teaching and I thought, God, if that was me teaching, I would do it differently. That's exactly how we started. It was just that simple. My goal at the time, though, wasn't to uh, create a business and it wasn't to be your host. My goal was just to validate my living on this earth. It was just, it was that fundamental and that basic. Uh, about two years after I got started on this whole process is that I literally, um, I found a way to monetize it on YouTube and I was able to find that I could balance my YouTube money to my actual physical job. And so that's when I made that decision. But what my biggest mistake of this whole journey was, is that I made the decision around April and I quit my real job and I went into this whole teaching online. And what I never realized is that the yarn arts actually fluxes with the, with the retail industry. So if you notice that a lot of people don't crochet in the summer, we also take a hit in the summer of uh, being less traffic and less monetization. And so when I quit in April, when I got my next paycheck from YouTube, I was like, oh my God, how am I going to survive this thing? And then my next one, which is then going into June and July and August, I'm like, what did I do to myself? But then as the season came back around between uh, around September, especially into November, I realized that I could survive that. But what I had to realize is that I had to budget myself on the highs and lows of this whole industry. So I found in this particular industry that it can be very harsh on social media and it still is very harsh, but I've learned how to separate myself in order to get myself through. But if I'm having a rough day and I hit the wrong comment, oh my goodness, you gotta be able to handle that. So I think the social pressure is the hardest thing about this whole job, whether you wanna teach or you wanna inspire or write patterns and everything, but it just starts with the ambition to go. If you look at my lifestyle, everything I do, I work seven days a week, these crazy insane hours. But if you have a children, you have a job, or you have a family that requires part of your time, it becomes really quite hard to achieve. But my point being, more than anything is that you have to make sure that you're realistic about what you're able to achieve and make those goals, write them down. Say, this is what my goal is. And, and if you make the goal so that you think you can get to it, if you exceed it, you feel amazing. And if you're close to it, say, okay, I just need a little bit more time and to not give up on yourself. But the, the biggest lesson of this whole environment is to being able to separate yourself so that um, the social media doesn't become uh, to a point that it just literally ruins your life. And remember, everything that comes out of your mouth, including my own, I have to be accountable for. So sometimes it's better to fold than to hold. But sometimes it's you need to hold up and stand up for yourself too. And it's those moments that make it the hardest. That's my raw look at being in my position. So if you're just interested, grab a camera and get started and just learn the lessons as you go.